Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm gonna show you an awesome new vSphere 5 feature and it's called Metro VMotion. First of all, I wanna uh, give some credit to the guys who uh, implemented VMotion in vSphere 5 because they really did uh, a nice job with lots of new features. And one of the, those new features is VMotion uh, over multiple network adapters. And all the new cool features can be found in a recently released uh, technical paper over at VMware. And it's about the architecture, the performance and the best practices of VMotion in vSphere 5. Okay, so let's hop over to uh, the laboratory and let's see if we can do some Metro VMotion actions. First of all, what did I configure? I created a, a distributed virtual switch and it's called VMotion and it's configured with multiple network cards. Uh, it has two port groups on it and the port groups are used by the virtual adapters for VMotion. So when I'm going to my ESX host and I'm going to configuration and to networking, you will see that there is one adapter right here, a virtual adapter 192.168.178.200 and um, this adapter is used by VMotion. Okay. On the other host, I also have uh, a virtual adapter. So when I'm going to configuration networking, I have 192.168.178.201. Okay. So that's correctly configured and what we will do is do a normal VMotion uh, without introducing any, any latency and uh, we will see that VMotion is actually working in my environment. So I have a virtual machine, the virtual machine is configured with 4 gigabyte of memory. Ooh, okay, and it has 4 virtual CPUs, it has Windows 2003 standard in it. It's running on hardware version 8 and the disk of the virtual machine is, is hosted on NFS storage. So when I drag this virtual machine to ESX4R and I'm going to vMotion this virtual machine with high priority, everything will work. It's migrating and um, uh, it will take some time before the virtual machine actually gets past the 9% in the uh, in vSphere 4.0 and 4.1 10% was the point of no return and in vSphere 5 it's 9% but eventually the virtual machine will be vMotioned to the other ESX host so I'm going to uh, migrate this virtual machine oh, I'm going to migrate this virtual machine back to the L server and high priority finish Okay, so what we will do now is introduce some latency and there's a very cool virtual appliance called the Wenatronic 1001 and it's created by Carter Shanklin and what Carter did was uh, uh, use a, a normal Linux virtual machine and there are some awesome things you can do with this virtual machine. So you can introduce latency, you can introduce a variance of latency, you can even introduce packet loss and you can do bandwidth toggling. So let's put the latency at uh, let's put the latency at zero milliseconds, and we have to route the traffic of emotion through this Wenatronic, and the Wenatronic is running on 141 at the end. So let's open a putty session and add uh, a route. I'm going to add a route for 201, which is the VM kernel port group on ESX4-R. And it's a static route, 32, and it's going to be routed to 141. So when I'm adding this route, the route is successfully added through the kernel. When I'm doing a trace route, let's see if that works, 192.168.178.141. Uh, one for 200. Oh, there's no trace route. Let's do a VMK ping. VMK ping to 192.168.178.201. So it's pinging to 
201. It, the traffic is flowing through the Wanatronic, and the latency is about 0.5 milliseconds. So let's see if the virtual machine is still V-motionable, V-motionable to ESX4R. And I'm gonna check if the Wanatronic is actually used. So what we will do is hop over to the performance screens and actually look at the network performance on the Wanatronic. So I'm selecting the Wanatronic, I'm going to performance, and when I'm going to network uh, and I scroll to the right, I must see some network activity right here. Uh, to, I, I want to be sure that the Wanatronic is, is actually used. So let's refresh a few times. It's well underway now, it's uh, at 63%. And what we see at the Wanatronic is a burst in network bandwidth. It's going through the roof. It's going to three gigabytes or something. So nearly five. So the Wanatronic is actually used, the traffic that vMotion is generating is flowing through the Wenatronic and we are going to uh, migrate this virtual machine back to uh, to the ESX4L server and we are going to introduce some latency uh, on the network that is used by vMotion so first put it back on the other host and uh, if I'm going to the console of the Wanatronic, I can actually create a packet delay of, for instance, 10 milliseconds. Okay, so let's see what happens if I'm trying to ping to the 201 address, VMK ping to 201. So what you see is that a round trip of 20 milliseconds is uh, needed to ping the host, but the traffic goes one way, so the vMotion traffic doesn't do a round trip, so um, this will be a, a 10 millisecond uh, delay for the traffic from ESX4L to ESX4R. So let's go to the Wanatronic again and let's see the performance chart. It's a nice peak, you see it right here. And I have to warn you, it doesn't look real nice. It looks ugly. The virtual machine will struggle to get to the ESX4R but eventually the virtual machine will succeed. So let's see what happens. I'm going to drag and drop this virtual machine to ESX4-R and let's initiate a Metro vMotion migration. High priority. Okay, so we're off. And the virtual machine is migrated from ESX4-L to ESX4-R. And what you will notice is that it's taking a very long time at 9%. You might wonder if the vMotion eventually will succeed, but what is actually happening in the background is that vMotion is tracking, uh, is tracking the, the amount of latency and is uh, adjusting the whole mechanism to that latency. And we can take a peek at the performance of the Wanatronic, because when I'm selecting the Wanatronic, you will see that the traffic that flows through the vMotion adapter is not peaking that much, but there is actually some traffic. Maybe we can see it in ESX Stop also. Let's take a look at ESX Stop and can go to the network view. What you see right here is that there is flowing traffic through the vMotion kernel port group, through the Wanatronic, and it's not much, but there's some traffic. Let's see if there are also some packet drops there is some packet dropping right here, so buffers are overflowing. Not much, much, but on the receiving side there are some packets dropped right here. And we see that the virtual machine is struggling and already it's at 25, 26%. And you don't see a real steep peak right here, but there is movement of memory. So the memory of the virtual machine is transferred from one ESX host to the other with a 10 millisecond latency between the two hosts. You also also will notice that it will take a little bit longer than a normal regular vMotion migration, but hey, what the heck, it's running on a wide area network, so, uh, and it will eventually, hopefully, succeed 28%. So the amount of traffic, the amount of megabits is 27 instead of the, uh, the peak we saw here, it's at 90, 
49%, so it's going steady. It, is, it doesn't have too much, much bandwidth because of the high latency, but the packages that are transferred are eventually going into the right direction. It's at 63%. The Metro V motion action is nearly done, and the virtual machine is transferred from ESX4-L to ESX4-R over a wide area network. So when you want to, uh, if you want to have a copy of the Venetronic 1001, check it on my website. There is a copy available. I've created an OVF template so you can download the complete Venetronic from my website. And what actually happened is right here, the V-Motion action has successfully completed. So it took a little bit longer. There was more latency, but eventually the V-Motion action is successfully completed. Wow, isn't it great? Cool. Okay, so Eric Sloof is signing off. Many thanks for watching and hope to see you again in the near future. Bye-bye.